Welcome to Future Consideration, SB Nation's NFL Draft Show. That's Dan, he watches college football. This is true, that's Matt, he's our NFL guy. Guilty. Let's kick things off as we always do by reviewing this week's mock draft provided by our friends at Mocking the Draft. Yes, all right, let's go through the top five quickly. What stood out to you immediately? Uh, well, Jameis Winston <laughs> at, at first. At, at, yeah, at first number one overall. Pick. Uh, we're in agreement that we don't like Winston as much as Marcus Mariota. This but is true. Let's get past that. Uh, the Bucks did just cut a franchise quarterback in Josh McCown. No! Yeah. yeah. So they no, they do need a quarterback and a quarterback in the future. He's the most pro-style ready quarterback in the draft. Physically, he has all the tools, can make all the throws. A little bit sloppy, pressed through too many interceptions last year, and of course has a number of question marks, red flags, and how he deals with human beings. Indeed, there's yes. that. Uh, the most exciting part of this mock draft, as much as a mock draft can be exciting, mm -hmm. is the Philadelphia Eagles uh -oh. trading up to number two to get Marcus Mariota. Just now, shelling it out. Now, I love the, I just love the idea of Marcus Mariota playing for Chip Kelly. Naturally. However, 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 trading your entire draft, mm. an entire <laughs> draft class, plus next year's number one to get Marcus True. Mariota. The Eagles would be great with Marcus Mariota. They are not so set on the rest of the right. roster that they can trade away. It is interesting rest. because if not the Eagles, somebody else might do this for either Mariota or Winston. It sure. never works. And when you look at playoff wins and just in terms of overall success in the NFL with Ricky Williams, of course with RG3, but you could see it happening. I don't think the Eagles are going to do it because Chip Kelly seems like a smart he's, human. He's too smart to do yes. that. But Next. still, it's fun to think yes, about. Yes, it is. Uh, number three, Jacksonville Jaguars taking Leonard Williams, the big defensive tackle out of I would say the surest thing in this draft. As for a football player and being successful in the NFL, coming in, he play inside in a 4-3, play with his hand down in a 3-4 as defensive end, defensive tackle type. He is so good, and Jacksonville really, they really seem to need more of everything. Well, their their biggest need is probably the offensive line. True. But the notion of Leonard Williams playing next to Sin Derek Marks is pretty exciting. It's the best value pick in the draft. It's it's pretty exciting. Let's talk about number four. Yes. Uh, Amari Cooper, the best wide receiver in the draft, most yes. likely. Uh, going to Oakland. Yeah, great receiver, great potential in the NFL. Hate the pick. Bad teams that draft receivers this high just become bad teams with good receivers. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. And, it's, and you're going to point to like, yes, Derek Carr gets a running mate of potential. Yeah. Number one, all pro level receiver, great hands, great everything. It just doesn't make them a better I'd love team. to see the Raiders make a pick to protect Derek Carr. Absolutely. And then a little bit down the line, maybe getting him some weapons. The Raiders have not had a thousand yard receiver since Randy Moss in 2005. Mm -hmm. So sure, they need a receiver, but they need to They won the Derek Super Bowl Carr. that year with Randy Moss as a thousand yard receiver, right? Oh, no. A bunch no. of playoff games, Definitely. surely. No. Next, number five. Uh, Washington taking Randy Gregory. The uh, He'd be an outside linebacker yes. in a 3-4 from Nebraska. Pass rusher, long, fast. Um, I don't, very raw. Very raw, and that's one of those things at defensive line, and especially at defensive end. Athleticism matters, and a lot of coaches feel like they can coach up the polish, coach up the move. You can't teach long arms. You can't teach running a 4-5 or 4-6 or whatever he might run. And when run. you talk about Washington's football team, yes. I think great coaching. Yes, that's exactly what you should think. But <laughs> if he turns out, if everything aligns, you can cover up a lot with a great defensive front, especially with Washington's own secondary issues. So you can you can mask a lot of things with hitting quarterbacks hard in the secondary. Uh, we talked about someone who has uh, the natural athleticism and mm -hmm. size to be a pass rusher. Let's bounce around. Let's do that. At number 13, the, the Saints taking Shane Ray, the defensive end outside linebacker from, uh, yes. from Missouri. Very similar in that he projects as like a 3-4 outside linebacker, but has the polish, has the relentlessness. The size isn't as good as Gregory. He's only about 245, 250. He can grow into a hand down on the ground defensive lineman. But yes, he's going to be an outside linebacker. And he is as polished a pass rusher, more polished than anybody in this draft. Uh, Saints were 25th in the NFL in sacks they last year. They definitely need pass rushers. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take another step down in the, in the uh, first round. The yes. Steelers at 22, getting Trey Waynes out of Michigan State. Cornerback, a big need for the Steelers. Trey Waynes, great size, about six foot, six one can run with receivers, great in man coverage, does a good job against the run, aggressive, needs to be a little less handsy. He's a little grabby. A little, a little you don't handsy. want those, you don't want those penalties. You don't want to stall drives and then, you know, give up a penalty. Uh, another cornerback going right after that, the mm -hmm. Lions taking Marcus Peters out of Washington. Yes. Uh, formerly of Washington, he was kicked off the team. He was kicked off the team midway through a lot of issues with coaching, but in terms of pure corner skills, might be the best pure cover corner, really aggressive, a big hitter, has great instincts in the open field, is fantastic. He can get a little bit cocky and a little bit overconfident, and he's kind of a hothead on the field, which leads to some 
issues. So, but so rare for a cornerback. So rare for a corner. But if he's able to keep everything together and get along with his authority figures, it would be a great pick, and he is without a doubt a first round talent. Uh, I, again, we'll have to see what happens with uh, Indomitian Sue yes. in, the, in free agency. If he stays with the Lions, that's going to change what they do in free uh, yes. in the draft as well. Uh, let's wrap up the mock draft Please. talk with number 30, the Titans trading up to grab Brett Hundley out of UCLA. Brett Hundley to Tennessee. If he's their quarterback in the future, immediately, I'm terrified. I don't like this pick a ton. I don't think he's a first round pick. I don't think he's ready to be a winning NFL quarterback. He's still a little bit raw, still has trouble with progressions, takes too many sacks, is hesitant in the pocket. But his pure physical abilities. He's, he's too much like Jake Locker he not is, to take. He is Jake Locker. Like, you don't like Jake Locker? What if, can I interest you in Jake Locker. <laughs> that, that's pretty much what this pick is. So yes, this was, it was a very interesting mock. A lot of great talking points. Uh, a fun one for sure. Uh, that's our review of Mocking the Drafts Mock yes. Draft. Uh, be sure to let us know what you think in the comments.